Hello everyone. So today's video, it holds something near and dear to my heart. Um, it's incorporating, incorporating self-care into magic or magic into self-care, I should say. Um, this is something that I think is very, very important, um, especially if you are a witch. Um, I think that taking care of yourself is part of the magical process. And I think that it was in, it meant a lot to me to be able to do this video because I think a lot of us um, tend to ignore our own needs um, for the needs of others and such. So I wanted to talk about incorporating magic into self-care or vice versa, however you want to word it. But why is this important? Um, ask yourself these questions. Are you getting enough sleep? And just in case you look me looking have just in case, I can speak English, that'd be great. Uh, just in case you see me looking over here, I do have my bullet points um, of things I wanna talk about. Um, they're just, I'll go 50 ways from the subject if I don't have it. <laughs> so ask yourself these questions. Are you getting enough sleep? Are you eating three meals a day? Um, are you not taking care of your skin, your hair, your nails, um, your teeth? Teeth are important, you know? Um, are you too busy to think? Do you have a tough time concentrating? It's because you're thinking about way too many things. Do you have a lot on your plate? Um, do you have no time? Um, we can't care for anyone else if we don't take the time to care for ourselves. And this is really important. So um, let, let me get into the other things first before I, cause this is what I'm saying. If I don't have my, my little guideline, I'll go on a tangent, so we, we don't want that. We wanna to stick to this thing. Um, Self-care is, is not high cost. It is not a luxury, it is a necessity. Um, Self-care is not selfish. I don't care if you have somebody in your life that's telling you that self-care is selfish, if you need time to take care of yourself and they're upset because you're not taking care of them, that is not your problem at all. That is a 100% them problem. Um, what is self-care? Um, on the surface, um, it's taking time to relax. It's to meditate, to give yourself a facial, um, to paint your nails, to even put on some makeup. How about a hair treatment, hot oil treatment on your hair? Um, <clears throat> even making a, an appointment at the salon for a trim, um, making an appointment at the dentist to get a cleaning, you know, things like this. And um, on a deeper level though, what is self-care? Self-care um, is shadow work. It's being authentic to how you are truly feeling. Um, those two things go hand in hand. What is shadow work? Everyone has a side to them that um, they don't show to the world. Um, this side often contains pieces of yourself um, that need healing. If not, if you don't heal these pieces of yourself, they manifest in different ways and they will continuously come to the surface and in ways that you may not recognize as things that need to be healed because you have all of this present day going on. But when something present day shows up and you have this overabundance of emotion about this thing that just happened, a lot of times it's not just this thing that you're dealing with. It's all of this deeper stuff that's coming to the surface for you to, to deal with. Um, so recognizing that, um, it, it, can, it can manifest in a variety of different ways. It can manifest um, in ways that affect your mental health. Um, it can cause so low self-esteem and low... Uh, self-confidence. It can invoke in yourself feelings of worthlessness. Um, it can cause addictions and addictions doesn't have to be drugs. Um, this can come in the form of shopping, you know, spending money that might give you this, th a feeling of comfort when you spend money. It can be an addiction to sex. It can be, um, an addiction to attention, seeking that attention. Um, so it doesn't have to come in the form of when you hear the word addiction, people automatically think of drugs and alcohol. And it doesn't have to be that. It can be 
things that you have deep inside of you that need to be healed could be the reason why you seek attention, you know, because that part of you isn't healed and you need some sort of validation. Um, our shadow self, if not dealt with, um, will block us from reaching our fullest potential of happiness and fulfillment in life. Shadow work and authenticity go hand in hand. Uh, being honest in how we are feeling, processing traumas in a real way, uh, being able to tell another how you feel, being able to release and let go of the past. So let's go through these one by one. Um, being honest in how you are feeling. This is something that I feel is difficult for a lot of people, especially when how you are feeling is a direct result of what someone else has said or done. Um, so if you, if somebody asks if you're upset and you say no, but you are, that's a form of suppression. You're suppressing those feelings. That is going to lead to uh, a whole plethora of problems if you continue to bottle and suppress. Um, processing traumas in a real way. This is so important. You know, I think that, you know, if you've gone through life and you've never really had anything significant alter your state of being, um, you're a very lucky person. And, you know, that doesn't mean that you don't deal with bullshit on the daily. That just means that you've ha never had any trauma um, in your life. For those that have experienced trauma, whether that be in childhood, adolescent, adulthood, those need to be processed those need to be healed and that's an uncomfortable uncomfortable thing to do and that is part of shadow work healing the deeper levels of yourself healing those traumas getting to a healthy place in relation to those traumas um releasing and letting go this is a process this does not happen overnight being able to tell another how you feel that includes being able to tell someone no. If someone says, can you do me a favor and you don't want to do it, but you do it anyway, you are neglecting your own self because you are not listening to yourself. You are putting yourself in a position that you do not want to be in. It is okay to say no. It is not your problem if they get upset that you say no. You can then further advocate for yourself and say, I don't want to do this because I'm not feeling well, because I don't have the energy, because I don't have the mental space, because I don't have the physical capacity to do it. You don't have to give a reason, but you can if you want to. Um, being able to tell someone that they've upset you. Vulnerability is a big thing. People don't like being vulnerable in that way of putting themselves out there to say, you have hurt me. You hurt me because of you said this or you did this. Being able to tell someone how you feel and getting that out is the beginning steps of, of releasing and healing. Being able to release and let go of the past. This is a hard one. This is a hard one because a lot of times if you have had trauma in your past or you've had experiences in your past that were unpleasant, it's easier to push it down and pretend like it didn't exist and move on with your life. But the problem with that is that when you think that you've moved on from that, you have other experiences in your life. And I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but you have somebody who's done something or said something you're driving in your car, for instance, and somebody cuts you off, and this unreasonable level of anger comes out. And a lot of people label this as road rage. People who have anger issues, it's because there's unresolved trauma. People are not naturally that angry. People are not naturally that level of, you know, screaming and yelling and cursing and you know doing all of these things because that is an unlef uh, unnatural level of anger and that's because there are things that are unresolved that come up with that feeling that amplify that feeling of you being pissed because somebody cut you off you can be upset because somebody cut you off but when you find yourself seething with anger there's another reason there's something backing that feeling up 
So being able to release and let go of the past will help you because you will have within normal range of emotional response. So ask yourself, what is stopping you from doing shadow work? And, you know, like I said before, the the topical self-care is the hair, the nails. Take time to do those things. Take time to, and this doesn't mean that you're a, a girly girl or, you know, like, you know, you can be a tomboy and take care of your hair. This has, this has, self-care has no labels. There's no labels on it. Taking care of yourself is important. You don't want to paint your nails. That's fine. You don't have to. Give yourself a regular manicure. File your nails. Take care of your cuticles. You know what I'm saying? You could put a clear coat if you want. If you don't want to put a clear coat, you don't have to. But take care of them. You know, um, doing a, an oil treatment for your hair. This goes for men and women. Uh, you know, taking care of your skin. Men should wash their face just like women should. You will feel better. This is not about appearance. This is about taking that time, that five minutes, to wash your face in the morning. It wakes you up, but it installs this feeling of vibrancy to your day. You're ready to start your day. That water woke you up. You have that, you know, the, the, your face is clean. You know, it's taking that time to really uh, make your day a little bit better taking care of yourself you have those those five minutes were dedicated to you um now as far as shadow work what is stopping you is it fear um are you pretending it never happened or it doesn't exist um these can be you know things that people it's like a, a normal go-to thing because it's easier to push it down and pretend like it didn't happen rather than acknowledging and working through it. Um, so how to do shadow work. Getting over that, that fear and understanding that it's time to heal if you want to step into that and do some shadow work. Now, I will tell you, it is hard. It's not easy. It's not something that is going to be a walk in the park and then one day you're like, well, I did shadow work and I feel great. No. It's, it's extremely hard to do, but the payoff at the end of the process is so worth it. It's so worth it. Speaking from someone who has done the work, who has done, who ha has processed my shadow self, who has come to accept parts of myself that are hard to acknowledge, you know, working through trauma, working through negative experiences, working through you know, anger and, you know, issues that I had with myself. It is hard work, hard work. And I will never pretend or claim that it is easy because it's not, it's not. It's, it's one of those things that'll probably be one of the hardest things you ever do, but worth it, so worth it. So how to do shadow work? Well, you can write and journal. Um, record all of your thoughts and feelings. This is how you start to become aware of your feelings of the unconscious self. Take time out of your day, make time. Like I said, ask yourself those questions in the beginning. Like, do you have no time? Now is really time to maybe buy a planner and start setting a schedule. A lot of people try to balance work and home and it can get hectic, yes. But that is the best reason to take time for yourself. If you are overwhelmed with life, taking time for yourself can hugely, hugely positively impact your life. So journaling, write, write down in your calendar. Like I'm going to journal once a week, once a day, whatever it is. Um, and just sitting there and start, just start writing. Start writing about your experiences. If you start to get overwhelmed with the negativity of what you're writing about, take a break. Don't force yourself through it. You, Yes, you. it's uncomfortable and it's supposed to be, but stop writing and ask yourself, why am I so upset about that? And understand that you don't own that. You don't own those feelings. You know, you are feeling that way because somebody else did something to you that you don't own that they gave that to you that was their burden that they passed on to you it's time to give it back 
hand it back to them. Go inside mentally and see yourself giving it back to them. Make it a physical object, you know, make that physical object all of the pain and emotional burden that they they, they laid on your, that they dropped in your lap. Give it back to them because you don't own it. it does, it's not yours. That's theirs. They own that. So some of the things that you can write about when you journal. Um, so some of the things that you can write about is... Um, how do you react in certain situations? Really think about that. And really think about if somebody says something that you found to be offensive to you, what is your reaction to it? Do you shut down? Do you um, say something? Do you get overly angry? Do you remove that person out of your life? Um, you're in the car, as I, I said before, and somebody cuts you off. What is your reaction to that? Somebody lies to you. What is your reaction to that? Um, your partner hurt your feelings by something that they said. What is your reaction to that? Um, think about physical reaction, but think about the emotional reaction too. And think about how you're reacting to these situations. Do they match? Um, this is important to see if they match your, your emotional reaction and your physical reaction. Do they match? Are you hurt? Then why are you acting angrily? If you are, if you are, if somebody hurts your feelings, but you're projecting feelings of anger, hurt and anger are two completely different emotions. And sometimes they go hand in hand, yes. But why? Why is the only thing being projected anger? Um, but when you're feeling upset. So these are things to, you know, really ask yourself. What, what, how do you react in certain situations? Um, how do we, how do you react with people? Um, <clears throat> whether someone is rude to you, whether you're meeting someone for the first time, how do we, how do you react with people? Do you shelter away? Are you an outgoing person? Are you an outgoing person with certain people, but you shelter away from others? Why? Is it a feeling that you get with certain people? Are you listening to your intuition? Asking, going in a deeper level, asking yourself, how do you react with certain people? Think about certain situations um, that have happened in your life where you've reacted completely differently with two different people. Um, do you overwork? Writing about that is, is important because you can start to see um, why you overwork. Is it because um, you have a lot on your plate and because people are just dropping work on you? Or are you a perfectionist? And you, you're burdening yourself with all of this extra work because it has to be perfect. Um, do you have a hard time telling people no? Do you have, you know, your nine to five or whatever that you're working for a job and then you're also working for, you know, and, and work doesn't have to be, you know, paid for, you know, job. Do you overwork as far as going to work during the day and then coming home, people are asking you to do things for them and you can't say no? Writing about these things, write about, are you a perfectionist? Do you overwork? Do you give too much to people? You know, are you neglecting yourself by overworking? This is something to write about as well. And you will start to see patterns of behavior in, in, in your writings and things will start to like pop into your head. Like, oh my, oh my gosh, yet yeah, that I do that. Um, are you a perfectionist? Um, so this goes into like, you know, the, and being a perfectionist goes in it, it. If you are a perfectionist, it touches all areas of life. Are you if you are a perfectionist, if you're a mom, you need to be the best mom. You need to be the best mom better than any other mom, you know, you know, you go to work, you need to be the best worker. It has to be perfect. You know, it, there can be no flaws. Th this is tied to an emotional uh, scar that maybe you were made to feel that you were less than when you were younger. Maybe you were made to feel that you were less than um, in some relationship in your past. The perfectionist is tied to inner things that are not healed. Do you have difficulty with vulnerability? This is a question that you need to be absolutely 100% honest with yourself. And it's so much easier to be honest with yourself than it is to be honest with other people, right? Because vulnerability. 
Um, do you have a hard time telling people how you are feeling? Do you lie to yourself about how you are feeling? Um, this again goes back to if something happens that has upset you, the go-to response is anger. And do you know why the go-to response is anger? Number one, you have other things coming to the surface that backs up and amplifies that. But if you were honest with how you were feeling and saying, I am upset about this, and you processed it for what it was instead of this anger emotion coming in, now it's being amplified by other things coming to the surface. Anger is the emotion that is the most easily resolved. You can be pissed but you can only be pissed for so long. You know, dealing with emotional hurt, dealing with feelings of being upset, being, dealing with feelings of being betrayed, having your loyalty questioned, things like that, those feelings take a lot longer to process. And so anger is the one emotion that comes shooting to the forefront because that's the emotion that you're going to process, you're going to feel better once it's, once it's processed and you're not angry anymore, but all of that stuff is still sitting there like, she had a chance, he had a chance to work this out. And it comes to the surface because you're, you, you, your body wants you to let it go, it wants you to release it. But the anger comes in, you're like, blah, 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 you know, and everybody does it, everybody does it. There's no person on the planet that doesn't get angry right? But the anger comes to the forefront as the go-to emotional response because it's the easiest one to process and feel better in a reasonable amount of time. Um, let's see. Um, if so, if you do have issues with vulnerability, why? Why do you have issues with vulnerability? Were you betrayed? Um, did you tell someone how you felt and they laughed at you? Did you tell someone how they how you felt and they told you you were crazy um, or that you were overreacting or that you need to relax or, you know, there are a lot of reasons why we have a hard time being vulnerable. And a lot of times, a lot, a lot of times, those feelings of be unable, the inability of being vulnerable is tied to someone else and what they did or said to make you feel like you could not be vulnerable with them. And that's an immediate de uh, de immediate defense mechanism to not be vulnerable. It's like I just won't put myself in that position anymore. And that's not healthy. Um, any past situations that hurt you deeply? This is also something very important to write down, write about, make it, you know, it, and it's going to be hard to, to go back and revisit that. But if you go back and you revisit that and you feel those pains coming back to the surface it because it's because it's not healed you haven't processed that you've pushed it down it's been sitting lying and wait for it to come come up and and be processed so writing about those past situations every single one of them that you have not healed from um if so did you ever recover from that or just move on so let's say if it's a past relationship and, you know, somebody hurt you, whether that be physically, sexually, emotionally, psychologically even, um, did you just move past it because it was such a hell experience? Did you move past it and just like you pushed it down and just moved on with life? Because if so, then there's a lot that's unresolved. Um, and this is why it's important to ask yourself these questions and write about them to allow them to come to the surface and allow them to be processed and you writing your feelings out on paper in in association with these questions and with the, sub, with the subject matter. Are you a yes man? Um, do you have difficulty saying no? If so, why? Um, do you, are you afraid that somebody's going to be upset with you? Remember, if you don't want to do something, you can and should say no. If they get upset, not your problem, it was never your problem. And so you just need to be able to say no and feel comfortable with that. And that takes time getting there. But writing about all the times that you have said yes, you know, some, some of those things you might not remember. But if you don't remember them, 
then Chan, maybe you you have healed from that. Maybe it wasn't that that big of a deal. But has have you ever said no to someone? And they reacted so unreasonably. Right about that, because chances are you ended up saying yes because of their reaction and how that made you feel. <clears throat> Do you love yourself? This is the big one. Be honest. Do you love yourself? Do you love the person you see in the mirror? And this does not, this, this can be tied in with physical appearance, but do you love the person who you are on the inside as well? Um, this is huge. Loving yourself is key to being your most authentic self because we cannot be authentic. We cannot be our most uh, authentic version of ourself if we are not even being honest with how how we feel about ourselves. So asking yourself this, writing it down. Do I love me? Think about it. Do you? If the answer is no, then there's a lot that needs to be resolved. There's a lot going on inside. Ask yourself why you don't love yourself. Write down anything that comes up in your mind that you feel is a reason for you not to love yourself. Then break those down and see who those belong to because they don't belong to you. You did not um, just wake up one day and say, I don't love me. You had experiences that made you feel that way. And so really getting to that point and, and really being able to break down those experiences and understand that they don't belong to you. Those are not feelings that you have about yourself. Those are feelings that you've adopted from someone else. Um, do you bottle your emotions? Um, being honest with this question as well. Do I bottle my emotions? Have I ever felt anything that I didn't speak about? And then, you know, maybe it just sat with me for a day or two or even an hour or a month. And then I just moved on. I never spoke about it. Do you bottle your emotions? Writing about certain things that, that has happened that you've never spoken about. Um, and get those out on paper. Get your emotions out. You know, if you feel like you need to cry, cry. Let it out. Let it out. Um, did you fully grieve the loss of someone that you loved deeply? If you've lost someone and you shut down and you didn't process their, like, their loss and didn't process your grief for their loss, then they're, that's a big one. It's a big one. Losing someone, it's this feeling of incomplete. There's something missing from your life. There's something that has gone, um, a piece of yourself has gone with them. You need to heal that. You need to... You, you need to grieve. And if you never allowed yourself to grieve for the loss of someone that you cared about, it's never too late to grieve and allow yourself that grieving process for them. Write down how you felt about when you heard the news, when you went to the funeral. Were you able to go to the funeral? Were you able to go to the wake? Did you have issues within the family? Um, were there issues after the death? Talk about, with yourself, on paper, all the feelings associated with losing that person. Uh, do you have trouble asking for help? If so, why? Again, that goes it goes back to vulnerability, not wanting to put yourself out there. But it also goes to this, this thing that we're almost pressured in society to be strong to be so strong that nothing affects us. We are unshakable, our foundation is unshakable. And we are this epitome of strength. And we have this like image that we wanna to portray to other people. But sometimes we need help. And whether that be just a shoulder to cry on, whether that be somebody to talk to, whether that be somebody for advice, reaching out for help if, you, if you're having mental health issues, why are you not reaching out? Write these down. When I felt this, I didn't reach out and I struggled. Why didn't I reach out? Was it because I didn't have anybody at the time? Was it because the people that I did have 
would have been judgmental. Um, ask yourself why you didn't reach out. And do you have this this way of you, you looking at yourself that other people think you're so strong, so you think that you need to uphold that image? Is that why? So writing this down is important. In the process of journaling, you will start to recognize a pattern emerging. Um, you can then work on the things you want to change, but you have to first be honest and acknowledge them. This is a key step. You have to acknowledge things about yourself. There will be things that come up about yourself that you might, you know, along thinking, you know, with, with thinking and processing the things that have been done to you that have almost trained you to think the way that you do and react the way that you do and, and so on and so forth. There are going to be things that come up of things that you have done and the things that you have done to other people. Process those as well. Forgive yourself and, you know, understanding that, you know, we are human. Um, now, how can you incorporate magic into a self-care routine? Now that I talked like 20 minutes about shadow work, <clears throat> journaling, just as I talked about with shadow work, um, journaling about your day, journaling about, you know, just kind of like taking your day and, you know, getting it out on paper at the end of the day, taking that 10 minutes at, right before bed, could be right after dinner. It could be while you're cooking dinner, just taking that paper, taking that 10 minutes to yourself and, you know, just writing about your day and, and releasing that, you know, that's writing how you feel down on paper. Sometimes it's like a, a feeling of, uh, that's what it feels like. It's a release. Meditation. These do not have to be long meditative uh, sessions. These can be five minute meditations. They can be short. They could be little guided meditations. They could be something that you do um, at night. You could put music on. Like, like I have a TV in my bedroom. I often, often, often play videos like this. Some of them have music. And I fall into a deep meditative, meditative state that then leads and guides me right into sleep. So it doesn't, you don't have to focus on being awake, just allowing your mind to relax and to, you know, reach that point of like having that fresh breath. Uh, a cleansing ritual, getting rid of unwanted energy, purging yourself of all that is not yours to carry. You could do this once a week. You could do this once a month, you know, just an, a cleansing ritual and just releasing all of that neg negativity and just let it flow right out the door, right out the window and getting rid of it. A bath or shower using aromatherapy, soaps, candles, lotions, etc. So taking that time, some people do not have bathtubs. They have just showers in their home. Um, some people uh, don't like to take baths. You know, some people prefer showers. You don't have to take a bath. You can take a shower. You, you can and still enjoy the experience lighting candles in the bathroom. You, you can still do the same thing that you would do with a bath. You can light candles in the bathroom, making sure that it's safe. You don't want to set the entire house on fire, but <laughs> just making sure you're safe. Um, candles, it can be battery operated candles if you can't light real candles. Having a space, when you go in prepping the bathroom for your little escape, for your, for your, like the hot water or warm water, whatever you prefer, washing over you, taking that time to see the water going over you and just kind of melting your day away and going down the drain when you're done. Um, really taking that time to contemplate your day, contemplate how you're feeling, um, getting out of the shower or bath and doing like maybe a self, uh, uh, I mean a, a face routine and maybe put on some cream, brushing out your hair, taking your time in the bathroom, letting other family members know, this is my time. This is mom's time. This is, you know, if, you, if you're not a mom, letting other people, roommates or whatever, make a sign for the door if you have to. Self-care routine and process. You can make it clever, witty, whatever you want. And make sure people understand this is not a time to disturb you. And take your time and really focus on on taking care of yourself in that in that moment in that time um, grounding and centering yourself I'm gonna be doing a video um, later on 
um, as I said before in the first video, I'm pre-recording for 10 days. So um, I will be talking, it'll be, you know, posted in a few days or whatever, but I'm doing a video on grounding and centering. So if you don't know how to do it, um, I talk about how you can do it and how ways to do it. Drink tea. This does not have to be uh, pre-bagged tea. You can make your own. Um, use, make sure you use caution with herbs. Some of them are not good for you. Um, some of them in, in large quantities can cause liver or kidney issues or things like that. So make sure you are studying your herbs before you use them for teas. You can use pre-bagged teas. You can make, but the using the tea, drinking the tea in, in relation to self-care is making sure that while you are drinking it, you are not doing anything else. You are sitting back. You can journal while you drink tea. You can watch an episode of your favorite show while you drink the tea. You can, there are things, put the face mask on, you know, if it's a peeled one, you know, drink the tea while it's drying, you know, make it. You know, so it's a pleasurable experience. Um, making a healing poppet for yourself. I don't know. I didn't do a poppet video. I did a sachet video, I think. I don't know what I did. Oh, it was a dream pillow video that I did. During, later on this week, I'm going to be posting a video of how to make a poppet. So you can, you can do that. Um, do a candle spell. For anything you want to bring in or anything you want to remove, even just a general healing candle spell. So um, a candle spell, is they're really easy to do. Um, they're really easy to perform. The, all, all you need is intent. All you need, you know, you can do a color magic, you know, association where you want to use purple or white or whatever color you want for your candle. You don't have to go by color magic charts. Um, you can go by what you feel. Are you feeling like it, you need a purple candle because you feel like you need to heal your aura or your spirituality? Do you want to get a, uh, you know, a brown candle because you want to heal and ground yourself at the same time? You know, so really um, taking the time, plan it out. Don't just decide five minutes before that you're going to do a candle spell. While you're drinking your tea and doing your facial, you can write out a... Uh, a candle spell and you can you know plan to do it make write it in your in your little planner when you want to do this candle spell make that part of your self-care routine um, work with your crystals um, for me crystals are I love crystals I love crystals so much there's so many healing properties to crystals I will show you. I've shown you before. I have a little um, selenite bowl, and this cleanses and charges your crystals. You can put them in the in the full moon, the light of the full moon, overnight to charge your crystals. That's fine. You can cleanse them with sage. That's fine. I use the bowl because it cleanses and charges at the same time. And so, any time that I have a spur of the moment thing, like let's say if we're in the middle of the waning moon. And I decide that I want to do uh, some kind of spell or work with a crystal. I'm going to make sure I cleanse and charge it first. I'll pop it onto my selenite charging bowl overnight. And then it's ready to use the next day. So rose quartz is great for self-love. It is great for self-love. And so working with your crystals, working with, with a, a rose quartz, if you are having issues of self-worth and self-consciousness, um, Working with rose quartz is great. It's a great stone. Working with hematite is extremely grounding. So if you want to ground yourself or you feel like you're being, you're kind of floaty, working with a hematite is great. Um, but if you want to work with inner feelings of self, rose quartz is really great for that. And working with the crystals could be, you know, just meditating with it. Just you could just sit and hold the crystals in your in your hand like this, and just hold it and. Uh, just feel the vibration. Just sit with it. Connect with your stone. Um, so you can do stuff like that. Um, let's see where we're. Write affirmations and use them. Writing them will do. Will have no use to you if you don't use them. Again, if you're having issues with self worth, um, I am important and I am beautiful. Say this to yourself every day. 
every single day. And it takes about three weeks to a month for you to actually start feeling what you're saying. Because at first, it'll be just words coming out of your mouth. You know, believe it. F feel it when you say it. You know, convince yourself that's how you feel. And you will. And you will absolutely feel that way in time. And so writing your, out your own affirmations and using them can be part of working magic into self-care. Um, let's see. Make your own face scrub or face mask using local honey. Thank the bees while mixing and using the mask. So you can buy local produced honey. Um, bring it home. You can mix it with like a sugar. So you can make like a sugar honey scrub um, and applying it to your face and, you know, leaving it there for whatever, 10, 15 minutes and then washing it off. Um, thank the bees for the hard work it took for them to provide that honey. And um, you can even put some of that honey, not the, not after it's been on your face, but put some of the honey in the tea that, that you've made, you know, so having a honey face mask, putting some honey in your tea, thanking the bees for the hard work that they uh, provided, that they gave to produce this honey, um, and connecting with nature in that way. Um, Self-care is essential, and it can be a whole day or just one hour a week or one hour a day. Um, dedicate this time to yourself. You not only deserve it, but it's necessary. Um, make it a routine. Make it part of a routine. Figure out. Look at your schedule. And when you say, I can't, I'm too busy. Is there anything in your schedule that you can move around? We get so set in our ways that sometimes change is uncomfortable. And we don't want to move things around because we don't want to, uh, you know, be out of our comfort zone. Making time, whether you make it once a week, once a day. You know, it could be one hour a day. It could be one hour a week. Whatever you, it could be a whole day. It could be a whole day. I just did that recently on sun, the last Sunday. Um, I, I dedicated the whole day to myself. And, you know, I needed it and it was worth it. And, you know, I, I you know when you need it. And a lot of people are far overdue. So figure out what you can fit into your schedule. Plan out. If you're only giving yourself an hour a week, plan out that day carefully. Make sure it's everything that you want to do. Do not let outside circumstances interfere with your hour a week. Do not give up that hour a week for anyone. Anyone. I don't care. If you have kids, I understand that it's hard. Do you have someone in your family who can come over and watch them for an hour? Are you married? Do you have a partner? They don't want to watch them? Too bad. You know what? They can watch them while you take your hour a week. If you want to take an hour a day, if you, you know, you, you can even do something like, you know, on Wednesdays, the kids go to bed an hour early. That way you have that extra hour before you have to go to bed and dedicate that to your self-care. Self-care is so important. It's essential. It's a necessity. It is not a luxury. It is not being selfish. It is not something that you don't need. It is something that you need. This is not a superficial thing. This is not a materialistic thing. You do not have to spend money to do it. It can be all energy work. It can be all just simple things. You can buy honey at the grocery store. You can buy honey at an, you know, a convenience store. You can making your own face scrub. Sugar costs $2 for a $5 bag. You, making your own products and infusing positive energy. Doing things for yourself is so important. So incredibly important. And I hope that this video makes a little bit of a difference in your life because I know what I've experienced in my life, recognizing and bringing in self-care and doing shadow work and doing the work has massively impacted my life for the better. And I am such a better person for it. And I don't mean better than anyone else, better than the who I was yesterday. So. Um, I do hope this video was, was helpful, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.